Can you can you hear me now? Is this where we need um, uh, the room added? Do we have anybody from the fifth floor conference room there? Actually, we're in the chambers because we could, uh, the mayor's office was in the, the fifth floor conference room. Can you hear me, Erica? I can, and it looks really impressive there. Oh, very, very impressive. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I see you now. Okay. And you can hear me, so that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, two for two. I feel like I need to go throw on a jacket or something real quick. Hey, Gwen. And Ashley, did you have anything that you were planning on opening with? The only thing that I was planning on starting with was just a round of introductions and invite Gwen to introduce herself in her new role and then okay. um, hand it over to you, Erica, where you basically can kind of do the walkthrough that you guys have already done. Um, uh, but also, you know, we've had quite a few questions that have come in already uh, over the last, you know, several weeks. So I thought we'd just run through those unless we get folks in the, uh, asking questions online. Okay. Make sure that Emily's on since she's my guru of walking through things. I'm just going to keep talking for the sake of Mariah. You got it? All right. Well, that was quick. <laughs> That's Mariah. We got it. That's awesome. Yeah, I have no idea what happened with Zoom. I promise, Ashley, I searched through all of my emails. I know, I, I don't know what it. either. <laughs> you know, and it's not, you're not the only person to, okay. when I've sent something as a panelist, they haven't gotten it. So I'm not too sure what's going on with that. Definitely worth looking into. Yeah, wow. Cause I was just like, oh man, I clearly need to work on my Zoom skills cause I haven't got this figured out evidently. Too much time in Teams. Hey, other Erica? <laughs> I knew that was going to pop up again. The first one I logged into, I wasn't a panelist. So I was like, oh, I should do this one. That'll work. Well, the, Ashley's going to do a quick introduction of Gwen, and then um, I'll have you pull up the portal, and then we'll walk through it one more time, and then accept any questions that folks may have and try to provide whatever answers we have. Sounds good. Thank you, ma'am. Right. And Mariah's just working on getting everything um, 
launched in Facebook and then we will get going. Thanks everyone for joining us. Just give us a second to get started. We are working on getting it streaming on Facebook Live and then we'll get going. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. We will get started in just a minute. We are getting the uh, live uh, streaming started shortly. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ashley Hand and I'm the Director of Strategic Communications. We wanna welcome you to our third information session and Q&A on the American Rescue Plan uh, Grant, excuse me, nonprofit application, which is uh, really a part of our ongoing effort to look at our pandemic recovery as a community and invite you, our community partners to the table to help us address some of our most critical and pressing concerns but also to prepare us for the future as we get back on our feet in a post-pandemic world. I wanna turn over and just welcome a few folks that we have uh, to share some information with you this, this morning. I wanna start with introducing Gwendolyn Thomas, who is our new ARPA coordinator within the unified government. Um, Gwendolyn, do you wanna talk a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself and your role uh, as the ARPA coordinator? Yes, thank you, Ashley. Um, as Ashley stated, uh, my name is Gwendolyn Thomas. Um, I have the pleasure of living in the community in which I work. I've been employed with the unified government for 24 and a half years. Um, I've worked in various departments, including the Board of Commissioners, uh, two mayors, former Mayor uh, Kara Marinovich and Joe Reardon, as well as uh, former County Administrator Dennis Hayes. Um, I'm currently in building and logistics, and as I transition from that role into serving as the ARPA coordinator, um, one of the things in the uh, job description that I will be doing is to actively engage with internal and external uh, stakeholders. So civic engagement is something that has always been very important to me, and um, I can't wait to have 
the conversation to start having the conversation, the dialogue with you about uh, what things are so important to you and needed for not only the organization, but the community as a whole. Thank you, Ashley. Excellent. Thanks, Gwendolyn. And now I'm going to turn it over to the team at iParametrics. Uh, we have two superstars who are supporting us with our grant process, including the application form, which uh, many of you have had questions about. Um, we are really excited to get to the questions that we've heard from you. But in the meantime, I'm going to hand it over to Erica, who's going to introduce her team and walk us through uh, with Emily the um, application itself and uh, some of the kind of top questions that they've been receiving as they are the folks on the other line of that email and uh, phone number that we have on our website for frequently asked questions. There you go, Erica. Thanks so much, Ashley. So I'm Erica Hupka. I am also here in Wyandotte County. I um, have been privileged enough to live here for a few decades now and am um, excited to be helping the community that I live in. And Emily is the other Erica Hopka you see on your screen there. And she'll be helping us walk through the um, actual application itself. We'll, we're going to walk through what the portal looks like, the questions that it's answering or that's asking of us that um, it would be helpful to have answers prepped for. And then um, ask, excuse me, answer any questions that you have uh, for us on the application process itself or anything related to the um, types of projects that you would like to submit um, related to uh, whether it's ARPA eligible or any other types of questions that you may have. So to start off the application process, first you have to register your organization. And that's the screen that you have here. That's the one that's linked on the Wyandotte County ARPA website. Thanks, Emily. So if you go to the UG's ARPA website, there is the uh, presentation there for the actual application itself. And then above that was the link to apply for um, one of these uh, applications. So for each organization, you only need to submit one application. However, within each application, you're able to submit as many projects as you would care to put forward. Um, with the initial registration, what we're trying to capture is your contact information and provide us that opportunity to verify that you are who you are, so that uh, we don't have any bots or any other malicious actors that are trying to apply or to fill up the system and, and keep us from doing good work. So you would apply as your organization, and then it will send you an email to the uh, provided contact email for you to then connect to the actual application portal. So once you've clicked on the link, within your email, this is what you will see. This is the full application itself. And you'll start by providing your organization information. It's available in English or Spanish. And as you go through um, any of the items that are marked with an asterisk do need to be filled out before you can proceed um, with the application itself. And if you have any questions about how to fill out any of these um, required fields, certainly let us know. Emily and I are happy to help uh, with anything you may need. Thanks, Emily, for getting this filled out. She's done this so much that she's very quick with it. <laughs> All right. And some of the pieces that we're asking for here as well are if you have any other types of um, designations for your um, organization or anything that we need to also be aware of um, with the um, application itself. And so we're also looking for any of your status information that you have. If you are a 501c3, et cetera, we would like for you to include that information, that um, certification there, as well as your tax returns and W-9s. Now, this portal is built for nonprofit organizations as well as internal UG um, applications. So for UG applicants, you do not need to provide those. These are for the external partners to fill out as far as the tax documentation, W-9, et cetera. And Again, as we continue to fill out the organization information, um, we want to make sure that we've got um, emails, phone numbers for the authorized representative, as well as for the um, person who is um, submitting the application. So in some cases, you're going to have a chief or a director or someone who is going to be overseeing the process while a different program manager, someone else may be entering that information. So that's why we ask for it twice in the event that it's the same um, person submitting as overseeing the process. And that's where the um, primary contact information comes in.
Next, we're going to ask for you to provide an overview of your organization so that we understand where you're coming from and the services that you've historically provided for our community. And then the next thing is to get into the various projects. And again, you can submit as many projects as you would care to. Um, just make sure that you're providing unique names so that we can, as we're pulling them out of the portal, uh, we know which description, et cetera, goes with which project. Now I will emphasize, it is crucially important to identify how your project intersects with the commission priorities that are listed above. You'll notice them in bullet points there. Please, please, please make sure that you have a very clear tie to how the projects that you are proposing ties into one of those pieces and how your services that you're proposing here are either an expansion of service for what you currently do if it meets those needs, or if it is a new project, make sure that you're including that language as well. Additionally, any supporting information that you would care to provide, you're, you're welcome to um, also include with any portion of this, whether you want to um, include it as an attached document, if you have a letter of support or anything like that, you are also welcome to um, put that in here as well for any of the pro project proposal documents. In addition to those pieces that are um, text boxes above, again, we recommend starting as a Word document and then just copying and pasting to answer each of these, these questions um, within the application. So uh, for each project that you need to do, uh, you need to fill out one of the um, budget narratives. And this is an Excel spreadsheet that walks you through all of the pieces of the budget that um, are typically outlined. However, if there is something that uh, needs to be included or considered within um, your proposed budget, yeah, you're certainly welcome to include it there. Uh, initially, we didn't want any um, changes to the uh, Excel document itself. However, there were some really great additions that um, would be helpful, I think, in the decision-making process, or we think in the decision-making process. Um, so go ahead and add those in there uh, if you think that it is an important thing to include. Uh, in addition to that, um, we would also appreciate any types of past performance that you have completed, whether it's a similar project that your team has done or whether it's um, previous work in the community that you or um, someone on your group or your organization has completed any type of past performance that would lend uh, credence and credibility to your project um, proposal would be really helpful to include there, as well as if you have any matching funds. And again, the intent here is to try to amplify the ARPA funding across the community. We want it to be as much, uh, it's doing as much good as we possibly can. So if you can come with, you know, equal matches, that would be phenomenal. However, whatever um, match information you have or any um, match commitments that you have would be uh, appreciated and, and help with your application. However, there is no match required. Erica, mm -hmm. quick question for you. Uh, yes. One of the questions that we've gotten uh, from a few different people is when you are submitting each of the separate project proposals, so you're one organization submitting more than one, do you have to submit things like organizational capacity and other documents uh, for every single project or just once? Um, I would recommend for each project only if they are very distinctly different. So if they're all kind of within the same family of um, items. So for instance, if you were doing a youth center and you have various programs within your youth center that you're putting forward, the capacity under one is sufficient. However, if you are doing a youth center and a housing organization and a service um, project, each of those is very distinctly different. And so we, I, it would be beneficial if we went ahead and had uh, that information included with each unique project. I know this question popped up a few times as well. Um, if you have any documentation that you wanted to add to your project, that narrative that Erica had mentioned, you can add them to the, you know, there's no place for them, but you can add them to the select files. Um, you can add multiple files in here and we'll be able to distinguish, you know, which ones go where, because um, as a case manager reviews them, all the, the files are together. So you can add those into any of these um, file boxes. There is not a specific range for amount. Um, so you can request as much or as little funding as you need for your projects. 
However, uh, we do have an ARPA presentation that was put forward um, by Ms. Von Atchen. Um, I apologize, I think it was last week uh, that outlines what our current funding availability are for both the city and the county. And so that would also be another factor of uh, how your organization would be funded dependent on the services provided and where um, you are located or not you are located, but where the project is located. And all of that information about our spending to date and kind of where money has been allocated so to date has been updated on our website. You can go to ycokck.org slash ARPA and look for the chart that displays kind of how the money has been um, spent in our immediate needs and ongoing pandemic response, as well as what's still unallocated and remaining in the ARPA budget. It definitely is not a bottomless pool. So, uh, um, you know, we're really looking for creative opportunities that are sustainable and certainly um, uh, um, potentially seeding other opportunities across the community as well. Thanks, Ashley. That's a great point. So to the sustainability point, if you would care to put it within your narrative or your budget narrative that you're uploading through that Excel document or within any of the other um, opportunities to uh, include uh, narrative within the application itself, if you want to include a piece about sustainability there, that also would lend to your application and it will be uh, brought forward through the case management process. And there's not any specific allocation for any specific priorities. So it is a collective pool and um, we want to make sure that we are looking at all of the best projects that are proposed across our community that will do the most impact across um, the city and the county. So um, we want to make sure that we are not necessarily um, pigeonholing or um, reducing opportunities for one priority over another. We just want to make sure we're doing the best good uh, across our community. Erica, and do you want to keep going through and then we can we can kind of go through a round robin of all these questions that are coming through? Absolutely. Um, and, and so with the um, alternative funding information, that's another piece that is uh, included on the application. If you have that, great. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, again, this would be uh, if you, for instance, have a ministry that has an initiative and it will be a one-to-one -one match or whatever the case may be, you can include that documentation uh, there. And then um, you wanna make sure that you're also included, including any other pandemic related funds, if you've received CARES Act, if you've received a small business administration loan, uh, any other types of funds that you have received across the um, pandemic timeframe uh, that is related to the pandemic, it's important for us to capture that as well. And then from what entity? And uh, last but not least is a conflict of interest statement. It's really important that you um, sign that saying that you um, are, don't have any other um, impacts or conflicts that may uh, infringe on this funding if it's awarded. All right, and acknowledgements and consents, saying that you are able to um, put this forward on behalf of your entity and that everything that you have in Included there uh, also is truthful and accurate, and that you agree to um, fulfill any reporting requirements that we have. As the Treasury requires us to do quarterly reporting, we too need to reach out to any of our sub awardees, which this grant would qualify to uh, capture that data on how the money is being spent, including the proof of expenditures, et cetera. And then once that's done, you sign your name, you check the box, and hit the submit button. And then the magic happens. Uh, it does. <laughs> so as you may be aware, um, the deadline for these applications was extended to June 24th, which is coming up in just a few weeks. Um, so we're really excited to see your applications. One of the questions that we've received, Erica, is regarding the decision-making timeline and whether or not, because we push back the uh, deadline to submit, if the decision uh, timeline has also been Im impacted. Uh, yes, so the decision timeline would then be extended and it will be based on um, the number of applications and the uh, 
the time frame in which the commission would like to review those and then put forward recommendations for approval. Excellent. Um, couple questions. I'm just going to start going through the list. Does your, okay, excellent. Does your nonprofit have to be headquartered in Kansas City, Kansas? It does not, but the group served by the project does need to be within Kansas City, Kansas. And depending on which part of the framework your project would hit, um, again, the final rule is linked about four times within the notice of funding availability. Um, so you can certainly go through that final rule and verify whether or not yours would be a project that needs to be used by the frame. We need to use a framework to justify or whether or not it would be an allowable expense. If we have to use the framework, it would need to be within a qualified census track. It does have to serve certain types of populations. So just be very mindful of that as you put your project forward. All right, how are the funds awarded um, dispersed? Are they sent, uh, I think there's a couple of questions that we can unpack from there. One is uh, there's been a lot of questions about whether or not this is a disbursement that you get all at once or if you submit receipts. So if you can answer that question in terms of how we anticipate the grant funding to work uh, and then maybe just talk a little bit about some of the kind of uh, logistics, you, you mentioned quarterly reporting and things like that, that um, our partners can anticipate as, uh, as part of this process. Um, and Kathleen, certainly correct me if I make any misstatements here, but we are um, going to try to be as um, flexible as we need to be with providing that payment to the organization. So in some cases, a um, upfront payment would be required. In other cases, a reimbursement process would be preferred. So um, when we, when you are awarded, we will work out those details with you to make sure that your project is successful and that you're able to meet the required reporting uh, pieces. Um, as far as the reporting goes, we will, um, as you are expending funds, we are asking you to continue to upload within our portal for grantees. Uh, or awarded grantees, uh, the documentation that you have to support that and to also provide the um, statements that we need for the um, population served. So again, there's, there's a lot of pieces that are required, a lot of moving parts as a part of the treasury reporting system. And so um, iParametrics team will help guide your program through that as well, just to make sure that we are dotting all of our I's, crossing all of our T's and making sure that all of the ARPA funds stay here. Excellent. Thank you, Erica. Can you speak a little bit about the term of the project? I know there's a difference between when you need to have the money allocated versus spent. Can you maybe give some clarity to what those timelines look like? Absolutely. All funds need to be allocated by December 31st of 2024, and they can be spent through uh, 2025. Uh, final reports are due in 2026, so we want to make sure that we're giving ourselves adequate time to get all that documentation together um, so that we can submit that final report to the Treasury and so that we don't lose any of our funding. Fantastic. If a grantee requests advanced funding, so uh, the money up front, will the agency be required to secure a bond? I am not sure on that one. So we will follow back up with you on that. Thank you. Um, another question comes in regarding new projects, so something, a new initiative that would be funded by this uh, monies. Uh, uh, are salaries for new positions and new projects acceptable for funding? Yes, and again, I would really urge everybody to go to the final rule and to verify whether or not it's the framework that needs to be used or whether it's going to be an allowable um, expenditure under ARPA. So um, these pieces, depending on what the project is, you can do the um, salary, you can't do any of the benefits, retirement, any of the um, endowments, uh, I'm trying to think of any other type of um, accounts, it can't go towards that, but it can go through for salaries. Um, and it can be used uh, for new projects, uh, whatever you need to expand that new project forward. Uh, the other piece to that that we want to make sure that folks are mindful of, if you're creating new positions, we would like to hear about how you're going to be sustaining those once the ARPA funds are expended. So we don't want folks to just be employed until 2025 and then have to figure out, you know, where we're going from there because we want this continuation of service. We want this to be a project that Wyandotte County can continue to count on through the future. Excellent. 
And we have a question on Facebook regarding the budget for each of the projects. Can you explain a little bit more what information you're looking for in that uh, budget? Uh, you, um, it, it said it, employee budget, you want it prorated, but I, we don't understand that part and did not hear if you said anything at all. Can you, yes, can you talk about prorating and, and, and salaries and things like that within the um, budget and maybe what you're looking for? Sure. So if you have, let's say, a part-time employee that you're looking to move to full-time and expand services uh, utilizing that employee during that time, whatever their previous allocation of funds would be would be um, subtracted from the overall salary of that person. So if they were making, say, $40,000 a year, if they were half-time getting paid $20,000, but we need another $20,000 from this ARPA funding, that's what you would put in there for the prorated piece because you're using the same employee that you have, but expanding services and expanding their hours. Excellent. Um, all right. Can you tell us again where we would find the framework versus allowable expense information again? And maybe you could show, show where that link is in the application. Absolutely. Emily, would you mind helping me out there while we talk about it? So um, the Treasury has the final rule available in a PowerPoint presentation as well as in um, the full language. So depending on how you would uh, like to view that, uh, it has either way, whichever is most easily consumable for you. Um, and I, I really do appreciate their willingness to try to reach folks at uh, whichever style of learning they, they prefer. So let's see. Um, hold on just a second. Let me see if I can actually pull it up real quick. Okay. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay, so on treasury.gov, they have, oops, hold on. There we go. Uh, they have the final rule and then the overview of the final rule. We're not seeing your screen. Okay. Okay. All right, let's try that. Are you able to see my screen now? Apologize for the scrolling. Yes. Okay. Um, so the final rule is available through the Treasury Department. There's also, if you um, Google it, there's also other organizations that link you to it. Um, to include the final rule, which is the entire document here, or there is also oops, an overview of the final rule that has also been released. And this is also available through the Treasury Department as a PowerPoint, if that would be preferable. Excellent. And we can drop that link in um, the chat for everybody as well. And uh, a couple more questions have come in already. Would you uh, uh, please explain whether or not funds could be awarded to purchase or lease a building to implement a proposed program? Um, that's going to depend on the type of program um, that you are proposing. There are certain cases where buildings may be purchased for use um, as consumed by the project, I guess is maybe a way to put it. Um, th but yes, there are certain exceptions where that can be considered, but we would urge you to reach out to Emily and myself and we can, and, uh, or Gwen, and we can work through it with you uh, to make sure that what you are including there is allowable. And maybe there's an opportunity to think creatively too. If you do need space, you know, the unified government has been doing extensive work on it, reviewing its assets and looking at um, kind of where we have facilities and services. And so maybe there's something uh, creative too that you can think about um, if that if that helps. And you know, I think one of the things that's great about working with iParametrics is that they're able to kind of look through these applications and start to steward them through uh, to ensure that they're meeting all the requirements and everything, but also to uh, really help you um, position yourself for success in this application. So I think 
uh, you know, I would encourage you to reach out to Emily and Erica sooner than later to, with those types of questions. And then if there are opportunities for us as unified government to further partner with you, there may be something that we could explore within that. Okay, are operating expenses for existing programs within your funding priorities? Under the final rule, you cannot use it for existing programs. It can be expansion of existing programs, but it cannot be for programs that you have currently. All right, I am looking for any additional questions. If I missed yours, I'm trying to scroll back and make sure I didn't miss it. There, again, the question does keep coming up about how much money has been allocated. Um, what I, why don't we show, if it's okay, um, Erica, maybe we could just show them the ARPA website where the existing allocation information has been documented. Do you want me to, I could do it on my screen too, if that would make it easier. However you would care to display that, Ashley, I can pull it up real quick or if you want to do it Perfect. either way is fine. No, that's great. If you wouldn't mind pulling up. Okay. My computer's so excited about our next subcommittee meeting, it jumped right there. Okay. Okay. So within our... So currently, again, this is on the UGs. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can actually see it. On the UGs ARPA website, again, if you go to wicokck.org and then search ARPA, uh, this is the website that brings you up, uh, that it brings you to. This provides you the link to our application. It provides you the link to the notice of funding availability. And it also provides uh, this information. This is a drop down within that same homepage um, that breaks down the available monies. So. For the uh, city of KCK, there is about $13.8 million. And for the county as a whole, there's about $2.6 million that is um, currently unallocated. There you go. Thank you so much, Erica. Sure. Um, I, I have, uh, there was another question about additional information on the website about expansion of existing programs. So that's the information that Erica was referring to in response to that question on Facebook is that that is available in that overview document from the treasury. Um, so that is something that is a determination that's made at uh, the federal level. Um, and we try to do our best to follow those rules. So, because um, obviously that's a stipulation of the funding. Um, so I think uh, if you have specific questions, please let us know. Uh, otherwise that um, has been documented on treasury.gov's website. Um, finally, I don't, unless there's any other questions, I'm going to give everyone just a minute more. We've got quite a few attendees online, but I just want to make sure we give everyone a chance to ask their questions while we've got our subject matter experts here. Um, but I did want to remind everyone, we have also a small business application available for uh, small businesses that have been impacted by COVID. It provides a variety of technical resources and funding up to about $10,000 for uh, small businesses in KCK. So please let your friends, uh, favorite um, businesses know that they, that application is also open till June 24th. So just putting a little bit of a cross plug there for others that are doing great work in our community as we wanna stabilize our local economy. Um, there's a question regarding about whether or not you can apply if a project is current. So I think the, the most important thing here is that expansion of services or um, maybe a retooling or rethinking with this funding that would be uh, facilitated by that. But I think that's, that's important that this is really about um, spurring uh, something new. And here's the small business um, grant opportunity. So if you have key partners that are small businesses rather than nonprofits, um, this would be their site uh, within the UG page. Uh, yeah, and again, if you have existing programming, 
uh, it would need to be an expansion of that. So serving more people, um, offering more hours, however you would be growing what you're currently doing is what we would need reflected within the application. All right, and then one last question. Um, uh, our current deadline, I think initial deadline as stated was the last week of July for notification of award um, with the postponement, or excuse me, the, the moving extension of the deadline. When do we anticipate approvals denials can be expected? Um, I'm not sure that we have an official uh, notification for that. We were targeting July because we wanted to make sure that we were getting that, those funds out just as quickly as we could. We understand that this creates a, a, um, a planning consideration for all of you guys, and, and we understand that the time constraint really is important. So we're doing our due diligence to try to move this forward as quickly as we can and get this decision as quickly as we can. We just need to make sure that we are um, involving all of the right decision makers and bringing in all of the right feedback that we need to make the right choices for our um, county, so in our city. Uh, so our goal would be to get it done um, a month extended from there. Uh, however, it's going to be dependent on uh, obviously all of the different avenues for feedback and input to make sure we're awarding the right um, opportunities and projects. Excellent. All right, well, I just wanna say thank you so much uh, to our entire team, both here at Unified you know, Government, but also at iParametrics for supporting this Q&A session this morning. We are very excited by uh, um, your interest in these opportunities, and we really look forward to working through uh, your applications. If you have any more questions, all of that contact information about uh, how to reach iParametrics with specific questions about the grant are available on our website but you can also email arpa at ycokck.org for general information, and we will do our best to get those questions answered for you. But if it's specific on the grant, we typically are forwarding those emails to Eric and Emily anyway, so we would recommend going direct to the source. Um, we will be posting this uh, info session online so you have access to it later if there's any questions that we covered and you wanna go back to. Um, and of course, uh, best of luck on your application. We look forward to working with you uh, and thank you for your interest. With that, I'm going to end the webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.